when I had my son Parker, he was very, very sick. Um, he was acute. He was acutely ill um, when he was born. Um, he had uh, petechiae or blood spots from the very top of his head to his feet. He had severe bruising um, along his hand, his arm, um, his side, his feet were purple. I'm Kara Gluck and I'm the Deputy Operating Officer and Strategist for the Oklahoma City County Health Department. So CMV stands for cytomegalovirus, and cytomegalovirus has been in the environment for hundreds of years. And when people, health, normal healthy people um, get the virus just like any other virus, um, they'll have flu-like symptoms, maybe sick, maybe sore throat, sore ears, don't feel well for a couple of days, but it'll pass and it's no, not that big of a deal. However, if a pregnant woman gets the virus, um, then she has the potential of transmitting the virus to her unborn child. And if she transmits the virus to her unborn child, then um, it can cause severe complications for, for that baby. But we don't really talk about it a lot, and OBs certainly don't talk about it with um, pregnant women. Um, but if that pregnant woman gets exposed to the virus, gets the virus, and then she does um, pass it along to her unborn child, then it can really cause some devastating effects, as minimal as nothing or as severe as death, and everything in between, a, spec a broad spectrum of in between. My daughter, kissing me on the mouth, um, drinking after me, using the same utensils, um, changing her diapers. She was in a daycare setting. And so, um, you know, children in daycare settings, there's bodily fluids everywhere, right? They're drooling, they're slobbering, they're sneezing, they've got snotty noses, they're potty training. So all that entire environment is just ripe um, with the virus. I had a pregnancy that really was just a very normal pregnancy. I went into spontaneous labor at 37 weeks. And when I had my son Parker, he was very, very sick. Um, he was acute. He was acutely ill um, when he was born. Um, you know, he spent 10 days in the NICU, and you know, the first things that they were asking is, um, "Were you sick?" Uh, just really trying to figure out because they said that his symptoms were some were consistent with a viral illness. They just didn't know what it was. I did not know during my pregnancy. Um, he, all of his anatomy scans were normal. I mean, pretty much, like I said, everything in my pregnancy was normal. And I started feeling um, not well the week prior to him um, being delivered and going into labor. I just really wasn't feeling right, and I knew that um, he was he was going to be coming soon. And I, but I didn't know that it was because he was sick. Um, and so um, we're fortunate in the aspect that we I did deliver early, and that we were able to get uh, quality care at the NICU and to identify what was going on with him. There's a lot of providers who really are not aware of truly what the impact of CMV can be. You know, if we had universal screening, we would have the ability to identify these kids. Um, and for congenital CMV, one in 200 births is impacted by, congenital, by CMV. You know, the big things we talk about, especially from a public health perspective, is prevention. How do we prevent? How do we prevent a pregnant woman getting the virus and passing it to her unborn child? The ways that we prevent it is making sure that that woman is very, very diligent on washing her hands, hot soapy water, 20 seconds, not sharing utensils, um, food, you know, not sharing with her toddler the food or the cup, the drink, those type of things, not finishing the plate um, after dinner time. Um, making sure that that child is not giving her wet sloppy kisses on her mouth where that saliva transfer happens. Um, you know, do kisses on the cheek or the forehead just for those 40 weeks. We're not talking about that, tire, that child's entire life. We're talking about the 40 weeks that a woman is pregnant to make those behavioral changes so that she can minimize the risk to her unborn child. And if you have a child who is between ages of one, one and three in a daycare and you're pregnant, your risk factors go up exponentially. If you're a pregnant woman who's working in a daycare center, your risk factors go up exponentially because you are exposed to all of those bodily fluids that I've already talked about. And so that hand washing is very, very important and making sure that we're not exchanging those bodily fluids.
know the risk, make sure that you're being diligent on those behavior uh, modifications that need to take place. And, and if you know a woman does that, she minimizes her risk of um, sharing this virus with her unborn baby. Parker's eight now. He has been diagnosed with a cerebral palsy. Um, he has epilepsy. Um, he has sensor, uh, sensory integration disorder. He has ADHD. Um, he wears glasses. Um, he has some challenges with his vestibular system and balance. He really struggles with his balance. And all of those are impacts um, from the CMV. Um, but even despite all of those diagnoses, he is an amazing, happy eight-year-old little boy. He likes cars, he likes racing, he likes um, jumping on the trampoline, he, you know, he loves school. If you looked at his brain scan, you would never expect to see the physical child that you see because his brain has been pretty impacted by the virus, but overall he does very well. He's in general education um, classes. He does have a full-time aid, so, and he receives services at school um, occupational therapy, physical and speech therapies at school, um, and he does have some accommodations. He's on an IEP, but to be in general education and to have the impact on his brain that he does, I mean, you know, we're, we're just really fortunate that he does as well as he does.